this video I'm going to be showing you the best private setup for DeepSeek R1 and that's going to be running locally on your computer so you do not have to share any data with anybody else this is just you and the AI model talking to one another so really really powerful stuff uh, to do this, I'm going to be installing a lovely little application called MISTY, which is M-S-T-Y dot A-P-P. So if you go over to the website, you'll find that MISTY is capable of not only running DeepSeek, but other language models. Also, it doesn't need you to understand Docker, the command prompt, the terminal. You know, you, this is a standalone application. So all I need to do is go off and install the right version for your system and in this instance I'm on my M4 Mac Mini Pro so I'm going to be installing the Apple Silicon version. Click on the link and then what happens is because it's about five or six hundred meg file download um, you need to wait sort of five or ten minutes dependent on your broadband speed for the application to download. Okay so that's downloaded and now what we're going to be doing is going and opening up the DMG file and then like any other Mac application, dragging it into Applications folder. I'll open up the Applications folder and then, of course, open up Misty, accepting the prompt that I want to open this, which usually happens for the very first time. Even though this is a quite a large download of 500-600 meg, what you will find is that you still need to install language models. Now, for this basic setup and walkthrough, I'm going to use initially the local AI models because that's what I think you're going to be doing um, if you've not got Olama or anything else installed on your machine already. When you click on Setup Local AI, it downloads the DeepSeek R1 1.5 billion parameters version. Now, that's a one and a half gigabyte file, there or thereabouts. So this will take 10 to 15 minutes and I've sped that up for the purposes of this video. So with that downloaded and installed, you can then start communicating with the language model. Uh, and I'm just going to do some basic tests initially. So the first time you interact with the model, because it's having to load that model into memory, it always takes a little while longer. So that's why I like to warm it up with a hello. Okay, so we've given it another basic test. What's the capital of France? And now what I'll do is ask it to write a 500 word story. I don't really care about what it comes out with. Although interestingly, it has come out with, um, based on the context of the conversation, it's give, It's not really given me a story. It's not really understood the request. It's given me more a little bit more information about Paris. So I will ask it to give me a 500 word fictional story and then this time you know it's just rattling off some words again i'm not too fussed about the quality of the writing at this point in time the 1.5 billion parameters language model from DeepSeek is okay it's not brilliant it's not got a massive uh, brain in terms of the training data so you know i'll uh, i'll just let it do whatever it wants to do with that all done, you can go off to this little icon down here and get some stats about the output. I'd love to see um, the amount of time it takes if the Misty developers are watching this um, because I think the token information is useful, but actually time would also be really helpful. Next up, I'm going to give it a task that I know it can't answer because it needs access to real-time information so i'm just going to ask what the weather in paris is like today um, and fair play to it it's just failed really quickly and just it doesn't have access to that information that's the kind of thing you want to be seeing because you don't want your language models to get in a model about something they can't answer and hallucinate and come up with all manner of weird and wonderful stuff so that's a good good response I've connected it onto the internet, um, but again, it's failed to give me the uh, the weather report. So next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate its RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation capabilities by creating a PDF and then bringing this into the chat so I can start talking and chatting about this particular PDF file. 
So it's just something that I generated around prompt engineering. Again, for the purposes of these tests, I'm not really that bothered about the quality of the information that's being fed in or coming out. It's all just proving some of the capabilities of what the things can do. So what I'll do is I will go and drag the file from my desktop over to the chat window and then to start off with, I'll ask it to summarize the document. And this is actually really good. If you've got a hundred page document that you haven't got the time to read all of the words in it, this is a good way of getting some of the flavor out of that document, to see whether it's worth your while digging deeper into it. And within not very long about a time, we've got a summary of the document. So super, super helpful stuff. So that's the basics of the chat in, a, I would argue, a very lovely user interface. But let's have a look at some of the other language models that you can have installed. What I particularly like about um, Misty is that it gives you a ranking based on your computer specifications around whether the language model is likely to be performant or not. So you can see here I've got lots of hundred, hundred, hundreds, but I've also got some that have got lower score and that's because they're expecting it to perform not so well on my computer which is really handy to not waste a load of time downloading large language models. The next stop on this whistle stop tour of Misty is to have a look and install knowledge stacks. So you either do that by going on the knowledge stack icon and then first off clicking on to use local AI model. What that will then do is install the mixed bread embedding model. And that's going to allow Misty to take a folder full of documents, some YouTube links uh, and some other notes or other documents that you might have uh, and ingest all of those into its database. So when it does RAG or um, Retrieval Augmented Generation, it's working from a set or a subset of documents and information that you've provided. It's very, very, very useful stuff. What I love about Stacks though is that you can have multiple stacks and you can have them set up for different purposes. So what I'm going to do is once this is installed, I'll have a stack called Artificial Intelligence and I'm going to pop in some Artificial Intelligence docs. Now when I'm doing my RAG based chat I can enable that stack alone so if I have a another stack called say I don't know music technology if I'm having a music technology conversation with the AI I can enable that stack alone and I don't end up getting mixed messages from the artificial intelligence stack so for me this is a really intelligent way of segmenting your data and making sure that you're chatting with the relevant documents this whole download is going to take, what, 10 minutes or so? Again, it's 700 meg, so you'll have to wait a few minutes for that to bake. Once that's done, click on Add Your First Stack, give it a title, um, and then give it a, uh, a location where your documents are going to be held. For this initial test, I'm just going to use the folders functionality. So I'm just going to ignore the files and Obsidian vaults and manual notes. I'm just going to create a folder in my iCloud drive called Artificial Intelligence. And I'm going to click on Compose. And then what that's going to do is it's going to spend a few minutes or maybe many minutes, dependent on the size of the file store that you've got in there, composing your knowledge stack for you. So once that's all ready and completed the Compose section, um, what you can then do as part of your chat is have a look and go over to the knowledge stack icon and there you can see you can enable that knowledge stack. You can specify how rigidly the language model sticks to the content that's in your, um, in your knowledge stack. Um, I'm just going to drop in the prompt engineering PDF that we used earlier into the stack and then recompose it to make sure that it knows that that file is there ready for, for use. 
So here we go, yep, compose. And then what we'll get on and do once it's recomposed is we'll go and start a chat conversation where we'll ask it to provide some details around prompt engineering. Okay, so let's see how this performs. It's starting to have a little bit of a think and a reason about what it should do and then quite quickly it's come back with a response and importantly it's come up with some citations and that is telling me that it's actually referenced the artificial intelligence prompt engineering document that's been fed into the knowledge stack. So I mean that's just so cool isn't it? Right, so we can now see that if we have a look in the local AI models, that the mixed bread model is part of the installed set of models. Great. Next thing we should therefore try is try bringing in our own Alarma models. And we do that by going into remote model provider and dropping down and going to Alarma models. So I've got Alarma installed on my computer already. I'm just going to put in the standard Alarma address, which is 127.0.0.1 colon 11.434, and then fetch the models. Now I'm going to select all of the models, and I'm going to do something a bit different because I've got a vision model installed within Olama, which is Lava. And so what I'm going to do is within a new chat window, attach a image file and get the vision model to read what that image is effectively. So here we go, I've just grabbed something from our Unsplash, an interesting head in the water and I'm just going to ask Lava the 13 billion parameters, tell me what's in this model. And in a very short space of time this vision model is telling me what is actually in that image. Which I think is pretty powerful and impressive stuff. For me, I think Mist is a real winner. Free for personal use. It's got loads of capabilities in terms of the different language models and the vision models it can use. It's also got RAG built in, so you don't need to spend a load of time setting anything up. You don't need to be really, really technically proficient to get anything out of it. So for me, I think it's a real winner. The downsides are it's a relatively new application and because of that it's still a little bit buggy. Occasionally I get JavaScript errors, occasionally things don't work as they expect to so I have to restart the application. So is it suitable for mission critical usage? Probably not at the moment but I think those bugs will get squashed and it will become more robust and, and reliable as time moves on. And if you want to use this in a commercial or professional capacity, then you will have to pay for the subscription. So you're looking at $80 per year, which is about £65. For me, that feels about fair, especially if you're generating revenue by using this tool. But there are free alternatives such as Coge and NA10, which will do very similar things to this, but you need to roll your own and they require more technical proficiency. So you're paying for the wrapper effectively. For me, it's a big thumbs up and definitely an application you should at least give a go in a personal capacity. If you enjoyed AI, machine learning, language models and all that kind of good stuff, especially if you're a Mac user, then have a look at this video over here.